So Jesse, I already recorded this video about Masvidal, but I wanted to do this. I want to put this at the front side because it's, you know, it's a long video and very deep in the video, I came upon some information that I need to put at the front because I don't want you guys to think that I'm like clickbaiting you about something that I'm not going to talk about. But I believe after looking at what is, you will see later on in this video, that Masvidal may have been ripped off for millions of dollars, millions of dollars. Now, I don't like, you know, it's it's like, it's a, it's a. I don't know. It's a sensational way to characterize it. And it's also not 100% that he's telling the truth, right? It's possible he's not telling the truth. But if what he said about this situation is true, and what we've heard about another party's part in this situation is true, I, 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 can't, I can't say that that would be a mischaracterization, that, that they both got ripped off for millions and millions and millions of dollars. All right? Now, enjoy the video. There's a lot of other topics that we talk about here about Masvidal, uh, but that is definitely part of it, and uh, and I'm standing by what I say there. All right, Jesse, on fire. We are going to talk about Masvidal today. Four stories, four different stories, a few that are very notable. He's going after Connor. He says Connor has lost his gangster pass for Miami. You're not allowed in Miami anymore, Connor, because of what you did to the, to the mascot. We're going to talk about that. And then this one is the second one I want to talk about, which is very, very bizarre. I might even talk about this first because... Masvidal is now claiming that he was not even there when the Colby Covington attack happened. All right. So you see this former UFC contender, George Masvidal claims he wasn't even there the night Colby Covington allegedly got jumped. Okay. So I don't want to get into dry snitching on people, but he definitely was there because we've all seen a video of it. And I'm not talking about the grainy one. Like I'll show you guys again. I'll show you the video. Like, I mean, if that's his defense, that's a shaky defense. I, you guys know, I love Masvidal. I am one of Masvidal's biggest fans. I have never wavered on this, ever. But there's a video of him. But we Literally, every single person has seen it. And not the weird, grainy one. Like, there is a video of him yelling at Colby in front of the stakeout. So I don't, under, I don't understand this angle. If that's what they're going to take into court, I think they're going to have problems. Uh, the other thing we were going to talk about here is about him boxing. Now, this is an exciting thing for Masvidal because he is now just openly talking about what would need to happen in order for him to take one of these enormous offers that he is fielding. Uh, and I could tell you who the uh, the most likely people that would be sending him. I couldn't, couldn't confirm anything for sure, but I could tell you who may be sending him these, you know, boxing uh, offers, right? So we'll talk about that also because he really might box. Uh, there's some kind of contractual things that would need to happen. And then we're going to talk about this right here, which is him getting involved in the uh, thing after Trump was arraigned in Miami and uh, what he said and what it says about him, right? What it says about him, because I don't want to, I don't know, you guys probably already know what I think, but in case you're new to this channel, I don't want to step on it. I want to save my opinion on that for when we get to it because I think it's very notable. Now, before we get into it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Very, uh, yeah, you know, I really appreciate it, dude. I saw a lot of growth in the last couple of days. I really appreciate you guys doing that. If you're gonna watch my content, just subscribe to the channel one time and be done with it. Like this video if you don't mind and we'll move on. Also, I told you guys about the new product that Gabrielle and I have launched and I want to make this crystal clear because I made a really big mistake yesterday, okay? So I talked about it. It's a new nootropic product. I'm not going to do this on every video, I promise. I just need to do this because I forgot to say this in the video last night. And this is not some kind of like ploy, okay? So the link for the product is in the description. It's a nootropic drink that is super, super strong, super strong, okay? I have had an Adderall prescription my entire life. If I tell you that something that goes up is incredibly strong, makes no sense that it's legal, I cannot stress enough, that is exactly what it is. I would never throw wolf tickets on a thing like that, especially when I'm telling you it's me and Gabrielle's you know, distributorship that we're talking about. But I forgot to say this yesterday. For, there was a ton of people who bought it. Start with half. I cannot stress this enough. And this is not like the thing of, oh, you know, hey, Viagra, you know, be concerned if it gives you a heart on for six hours and people are all, wait, why would I be concerned about it? I'm being totally serious. Start with half. If you drink the whole stick, they come in single stick things, you will it's too much okay start with half i'm totally serious for anybody who already bought it or anyone who's going to buy it because of this video start with half link is in the description trust me it is the cleanest up you will ever feel in your entire life that is legal it is unbelievable but start with half okay 
So Gabrielle told me I'm supposed to be selling this duo thing. There are these, these capsules that come with it. You take one of the capsules and it supposedly makes it even better. I don't even do that. I just do whatever. It's there if you want it. So anyway, let's, uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, sorry for talking about that for that long, but it's really important. Start with half. So many people bought it that I started having an anxiety attack because if you drink the whole thing, you will have problems. All right, so, well, <laughs> you'll just be like. Zrr. Okay, so let's start right here, all right? So Mosfidol, uh, you know what? Let's start with Connor real quick, okay? Because we could just run through this really, really quick, right? So Connor did the thing with the, you know, with the mascot. We've already talked about this. Uh, and it was obviously a pre-planned bit with the Heat Sky. And it says, unfortunately, it did not go well for Bernie as during the gag where McGregor would attack him, he received an injury that resulted in him being taken to the hospital. McGregor struck the mascot once, dropping him to the floor, followed up by a shot while Bernie was on the ground. Many criticized McGregor for his actions, but his boss, UFC Dana White, seemed to think it wasn't McGregor to blame. Right, because it's not real. It's not real. Uh, so White said, what's up with mascots wanting to get punched in the face by professional fighters? What'd you expect? Okay, well, that's true too, but... Uh, let's just say okay what are those mascots things made out of unless you unless you're like the golden knights i'd assume it's a metal helmet i wouldn't have professional fighters punching me in the face okay right except he didn't punch him in the face okay that's not where his face is where he punched him so masadol said connor you whoop that's a swear word how far are we far enough you f and p word you came in here and you threw a, a chakras you threw the chakras of the mascot and the team so for that, you banned. Oh, wow. Okay. He's, oh. <laughs> oh, you threw off the chakras for the team. Okay, so Masadal is blaming Connor for the heat losing. Okay. That's way cooler than I thought. That's way cooler. I thought he was like mad, like believed that he hurt him. No, he's saying the Miami Heat lost because Connor got in there and hurt the mat. Okay, that's way funnier, actually. Kudos to Masadal. That's funny. That's the kind of thing I would have said, too. No surprise, Masvidal's my boy. I mean, he doesn't know that. Well, I don't know. If he knows who I am, then he would know it was me when I bombarded the front when I was cage side and fist bumped him upon his retirement from the most genuine place of respect and admiration that a person can come from. So maybe he does know. But he's my dude. Uh, but on this, I'm just going to have to, you know, look, I'm also, what, whatever I am, right, whatever this is, I can't, uh, you know, pretend that, this statement right here which is uh former title contender uh you know saw 530 percent boost from uh from the alleged assault masadol claims he wasn't even there when colby covington got jumped okay so i would love to be able to just uh you know i would love to be able to just kind of go yeah that makes sense except for this video right you guys remember this like there's it's it's on video remember this the slow motion see that's moss all right there in front of the steakhouse and he's yelling at colby right there i mean like this this is just what it is i don't want to play it because the uh source of that video will uh you know snake the monetization on this video but like what are we talking about dude it's on video like you know, there's the video of the supposed assault, which, listen, there's no secrets here, okay? At the time that this happened, I was, you know, convinced that the Masadol and Colby beef was completely fake, all right? Like, at the time, I was totally convinced that it was fake. I guess, you know, I look like a lunatic at this point for that. But that's where my brain was at. And so I reported on this looking for a way that it was still fake. And so the video of him supposedly punching Colby, you couldn't tell. Like, those could have been three girls punching a girl. You can see nothing on that video, right? You couldn't see anything. But that video that I just showed you is crystal clear. It's definitely Masvidal. 100%. Masvidal yelling at Colby. So I don't understand the defense of I wasn't there that just doesn't make any sense to me because again he knows it's on video you know what I mean like everyone knows it's on video I don't understand that dude loves me actually Masvidal continued when he said he was banned for the restaurant I ran into him the other oh oh about the the restaurant I oh 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 he's saying the business saw a 530% increase in business 
the business saw a 530% increase in business. Okay, now, okay, I got it. I got, I got it. I got it. Okay, that's different. That is very different. So yeah, I'm sure he would love him, you know? And that's interesting that we would be talking about this because yesterday we were talking about the Mayweather and Gotti situation, the Gotti family threatening the Mayweathers. And I talked about how John Gotti Sr. came into power when he became the boss of the Gambino family and they assassinated Paul Castellano in front of Spark Steakhouse. You guys understand Spark Steakhouse, that, I mean, that I, I doubt that they have had an empty reservation book since that happened 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Wait, what? 40 years ago. You know what I mean? So yeah, violent assaults of, uh, of famous people in front of your restaurant. That's good for business. There's no such thing as bad publicity, man. You know, now you would think actually, you would think, hey man, a guy got murdered in front of our restaurant. You would think that would be, you would think that would be bad publicity, but it's not because of who it was. It's like, wait, that was a mafia hit? Damn damn regular people know that's not like a thing that it's not like a gang war well actually it is like a gang war but it's not like a street gang war you know it's not like the crips and bloods shot each other it's not like uh you know a latin king shot a gangster disciple in front you know what i mean it's like the italian mafia you know like these are these are like wealthy people going to a high class restaurant and they pulled off the hit of the century in front of the restaurant and same thing with mafia. it's like Dude, yeah, the Nelk boys and Colby Covington dining at our establishment and George Mossadol found out and he came out there and he punched Colby in the face in front of the restaurant and yelled at him. So yeah, that's awesome for the restaurant. Excellent, excellent work, Mossadol. I should think of, you know, I mean, I listen, how many times have I said that it's an easy public to, you know what's going to go viral? Fights injuries moss you know conor mcgregor injures the mascot viral moss at all attacks colby viral this person got in a fight at blah 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 viral this guy broke into this guy's house and he broke his hands and elbows smashing this crackhead's face viral you know so yeah uh congratulations on that now let's talk about the most interesting part of this conversation though which is this so this this article started with masadol tells jake paul they were never close to fighting because ufc never wanted to let me go do boxing okay so the context of this article is he's talking about how they weren't actually close to fighting while he was in ufc he's retired now it's different okay it's different I'll t- it's not different contractually. The reason that he couldn't fight when he was in UFC is because he was under contract with the UFC, right? UFC needs to green light him going to box. While he's in the UFC, green lighting him to go box has all kinds of random, you know, not even random, just simple things that are going to keep them from doing that. Number one being they don't want to risk him getting injured right or that's i mean number one of you know five equal reasons but another one being they don't want all the fighters to be constantly asking if they can go box and as a matter of fact i'm going to take this opportunity to further discuss that particular item right there in a second but it's like you don't want to send that message out people make much more money boxing than fighting in the ufc of course you don't want that message out there and you really don't want all of your fighters badgering you that they want to go box now too which is exactly what would happen if you let him do it you know, um, but just stopping on that point really quick. I just want to reiterate this. The reason why there is so much more money to be made in boxing is because there is absolutely no infrastructure. Look at how these boxing fights get made. Okay. You have like this party, this team is talking to this party and this team. They're going out, they're finding investors, right? Like they have to actually go out and find wealthy investors to put on a fight. They're like, all right, so we've got a deal with Showtime. We got these guys to agree. We got this guy, you know, and and our team agrees. We got contracts signed, you know, or letters of intent signed. We're selling this fight for a hundred million dollars. Investor, do you want it? Here's what we're projecting that it's going to do. And then here's what we have, you know, left over for marketing budget. It's like a single one-off business in every single boxing match. There's no organization, there's no infrastructure, no nothing, right? You have no control over who fights who, none. No one does. 
they just go pitch each other and th- until they like you know it's like spin the bottle and eventually they land on a matchup that actually comes together okay the ufc is an actual functioning corporation okay they pay guys less but they also have a, a, a large corporate structure where they're paying people to work there every single day whether or not fights happen like do you understand like comparing boxing to ufc is like comparing bananas and oranges it's not the same thing it's just not the same thing at all i realize people go in and they punch each other in both sports that is literally where the similarities end on the, uh, on the corporate structure they don't they don't they don't even resemble each other there's nothing similar about them on the corporate side of how things get put together nothing nothing ufc is not going out and fighting investors ufc is funding these fights themselves and they have a structure oh we know we have this fight on this date we know we have this fight on this date we know we have this fight on this date and they fill the cards up with fighters okay no one else does that not literally no other organization does that where they've committed to a certain number of shows in advance like no one does that maybe bellator i don't know but there's no comparing those like it's not the same thing at all now the difference for masvidal now versus before is he's retired and he's retired for real okay it is a very different thing getting a green light from the ufc to let you box when you are actually a retired ufc fighter for real because again the actual number one reason they don't want to do it is because they do not want all the other fighters constantly badgering them to go fight and make money boxing right and so for you know when if a guy really retires not like fake retires you know i'm retired hey ufc can i go box you know the guy's 31 years old he's in his prime i retire ufc is not stupid that's why they didn't let george st pierre go fight but they did let jose aldo go fight they did let Luke Rockhold go fight. They did uh, let Cowboy go fight. You guys might not know that yet, actually. But Cowboy can fight in BKFC. He's allowed. You know? Because they're done. They're actually done with the UFC. And George is actually done with the UFC. And he has big uh, um, options. He's got big options. Lots of money. Okay. He just came out and said that the biggest check that he ever made for a UFC fight was $5 million. I believe the rumor is that that was for the Usman fight that he took on short notice. Okay. Now, if that's true, I just want to say this real quick. If that's true, man. I mean, first of all, good for him. You know, like, I, let me just, I'm doing the, the thing that I, that I always talk about other people doing, which is they get lost in translation of what these numbers actually mean. Oh, the person only got 14 years in prison. You're all... 14 years as if that's like not a lot of time 14 years you're 29 years old you were 15 14 years ago it's an enormous amount of time but also people do that with with money when it comes to the USA like oh the guy's only gonna make five million you know what I mean he's only gonna make five million dollars you know what I would do for five million dollars right now I wouldn't let someone amputate my arm with a bone saw like I would for a hundred but uh you know five million dollars a lot of money so let me just first of all say that that said i want to go back to the 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 colby versus masvidal fight right now there is a possibility that masvidal is is uh is doing he's being a company man right like he's uh he's being a company man and what i mean by that is the ufc doesn't want their money on blast dude ufc doesn't want their money on blast you know they don't want guys who have made $10 $10 million for a fight talking about them having made $10 million for a fight. They don't want that, right? They don't want that. I recently found out about a very famous uh, UFC fighter who made a huge payday where everyone thinks that they know how much he made and it's almost right, but it's different. You know, like it's like everybody thinks they made this for one fight and this for the other, but they actually made this number, but split very different. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. I don't even know why it came up. But like Masvidal, you know, if he really made $5 million, if he made less than $5 million for the Colby fight, and if Colby really did not have back-end points on that pay-per-view, given what those guys went through and what those guys put into marketing this, whether the beef is real, fake, or otherwise. Okay, so it's real, right? The conflict that those two guys had and the amount of publicity that they put on that beef, if Masvidal made less than $5 million 
and Colby really didn't get back in? Listen, they don't even have words for for how good of a deal the UFC got. Let's just put it like that, right? So rather than being negative about it, you know, like being like, oh, you know, it's a big ripoff or whatever. Not that. Just, I don't think you have words for how good of a deal the UFC got on that card. Because you know what? There were no other, there were no title fights. So you're telling me the only person making back end was George and he made less than $5 million total? You have any idea what the margin on that card must have been? If that's true? I'm not convinced it's true. I, I'm not convinced it's true. And I'll tell you exactly why. Colby has seemed pretty comfortable not fighting. You know? He hasn't fought since then. That was March of 22. It's June of 23. You don't hear him badgering for a fight. You want to know what makes you able to not badger for a fight? Make it $7 million for a fight. You know? Colby seems like actually a relatively conservative guy. I mean, I know the the the, the person he put, you know, he puts out there, you know, chaos, whatever, looks like a person who just vomits all his money on whatever. I very, I am very skeptical that that's how he actually lives. This is just based on my read on him as a person, my real read on him, like on the real guy. I would bet you that 80% of the money that he got from that fight went to a money manager and he was like, I want to make sure that I have this money to retire on and he's not touching it, you know? You got a little bit of play money, dude. You make, if I'm right about him making a lot more than people are leading on, you know, you make, uh, let's say he made six million for the fight. He ends up netting three after, uh, you know, nets $3 million after paying out, paying taxes and paying out his people. You give $2 million to a money manager and you say, this is my, I'm never going to be broke money. Do with it what you will, right? Shit, even give him 2.4. You stick 600 grand in the bank of net money and you're like, this is what I'll live on. You go buy a $30,000 watch to commemorate what you did. You still got 570 in there. You know what I mean? Go buy a nice car. Now you still got a half a million dollars to live on. You know, you know what I mean? That would be my guess of how how Colby would actually handle that. So, anyway, hopefully that they hopefully they actually got that money. Now, also, I wanted to really quick talk about this too, which is uh, that he crashed uh, Donald Trump's post arraignment bash in Little Havana. He said, "Don't fight him," and he said, uh, "You know." He said he's defending Trump, and he said, we got your back, dude. We've got your back. And here's what I'm going to say about that. I think that that shows tremendous character from George Masvidal, obviously. Now, this is not a new thing. He's been very open and public about his support for Trump. And this has nothing to do with whether you love Trump, hate Trump, love Biden, hate Biden. It's not relevant. That's not the point that I'm making. You know, what I'm saying is, I mean, Masvidal is in a unique situation, not unique, but he's got, he has the flexibility to say and do whatever he wants because he has money. But staying out of politics is a pretty good policy if you're in business right now. And Masvidal has principles that he believes in. And anybody who thinks that like, this is a, you know, oh, he's a MAGA guy. Listen to Jesse MAGA. Listen, listen to George when he talks about why he supports Trump. And then it's not about whether you hate Trump or love Trump or whatever. It's just not even about that. It's about respecting a person who has principles that he makes decisions on, okay? Masvidal's family escaped communist Cuba. If you hate Trump because you read nasty things about, uh, you know, you read nasty things about Trump in the New York Times or whatever, it's like, hey, dude, you and Masvidal are having two completely different conversations. Masvidal is talking about something that his family knows explicitly, which is the danger of, of socialism gone awry into true genuine communism, which in his opinion, Trump stands the most starkly against. And so he's got his back, dude. Now, if you hate Trump, that's irrelevant, dude. Irrelevant. Now, if I saw someone supporting, I can't help myself. I can't, I can't help myself. I really was trying to do this and not do this. I really was trying. I regret it. Every single time I talk politics on this channel, Every single time, I can't help it. I tried. Okay? 24 minutes in, no one's going to get here. That doesn't, it's not on my side anyway. Explain to me, explain to me how you could possibly look at what is happening in to Trump federally 
and you're cool with that. Explain it to me. Unless you're like, well, yeah, I also expect them to indict Biden also, since every person on earth knows that he also had taken home classified documents. Exactly, exactly what Trump has been indicted for, Biden is also guilty of, and everyone knows it on the classified document stuff. I'm not even going to get into the Burisma stuff. Because if you don't already know about the Burisma stuff, then me saying it is not going to change anything for you because you have to be willfully not looking at things to not know already about what I'm talking about with that. It's pointless. There's no point in me even telling you. Because if you don't know by now, you very clearly are going like this or you're choosing not to believe absolute overt evidence of what's going on there. But on the classified, you want to know what I think? Honest to God, you want to know what I think? I think that they did the Biden uh, classified documents thing on purpose to gaslight people who support Trump. I honestly think that. I think they did the Trump thing and then they intentionally were like, oh, we found all these classified documents at, at Biden's garage specifically to make people who support Trump feel powerless. That's my honest opinion. They want you to feel powerless. They want you to know that yes, we are indicting Trump because it's Trump. We're not even hiding the ball. Every single person in the country knows that Biden did the exact same thing. There's nothing coming for him. Oh, the Hunter Biden laptop, nothing coming for him. Hillary Clinton emails, nothing coming from her, nothing. But we are going to indict Trump and, and potentially give him life in prison. Yeah, we are going to do that. Just so, you're, just so we're clear, we're doing that. And it's not based on the classified document. It's not based on any of that. We're doing it because it's him. We've weaponized the justice system. And we're, not, we're intentionally letting you know that to make you know you don't have power. You have no power. We have power. We do what we want to do. And we know that the only people that are going to be upset about this are people who support him. And we don't care about you anyway. As a matter of fact, you, we consider you to be our enemy anyway. So that's a bonus for us. We like the fact that you know. Because everyone else is willfully ignorant. They honestly believe they either are indifferent or they honestly believe that Trump is such a bad guy that he deserves this, even if it's complete nonsense, where they also, it's like, dude, you realize that Biden did the exact same thing. And they're like, yeah, I do. And you're like, and you're cool with this. And they're like, yeah, I am. I hate him. And you're like, okay. So I'm just, I just want to make sure I understand. You know that the two presidential candidates did the exact same thing and they're threatening to put him in jail for life. They're not going to do anything to the other guy. And you're cool with that because you hate that guy. Yes. Which of us sounds like a Nazi now? You know what I mean? They love throwing that word around, Nazis. Okay, well, which of us sounds like that now? Right? You don't like him, so you're cool putting him in a room for the rest of his life when the person that you're going to vote for for president, okay? We're not just talking about some random person. The person you're going to vote for for president did exactly the same thing and you're willing to put him in a room for the rest of his life for the exact same thing. You, you're the one who said that. I didn't say that. You did. I would not be down with that. No. No, I wouldn't. I, oh, oh, you wouldn't be? No, I would not be down with that. No, is the answer. You, I... I would say don't indict either of them because there's never been a president who's been indicted for the exact reason that they're doing it this time. You know, because the, I mean, who even knows how many people actually support Trump? But the, the, all those people, you are letting them know it's not their country anymore. As much as I disagree with a million things with people over there, when Brittany Griner was in Russia in a gulag, what was my position then? When I still had my channel, that was one of the last videos I did. What was my position? Okay, everybody was like, she kneeled for the flag. Leave her over there. Let her sit in the gulag. What did I say? I said, no. She's an American. She's an American. Go get her, dude. She can come back here, and then we could disagree again. But she's an American. No. 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 If you stand on principles, you cannot support her getting kidnapped by the Russian government and put in a gulag. No. And used as a, as a bargaining chip. Get her out of there, dude. Do I agree with anything that she thinks? No, of course not. But I stand on principles, like Mosfidal does. Anyway, that's what I got. Uh, love you guys. And uh, if you're 
someone who disagreed so staunchly with that that this is the last time you see one of my videos it was fun while it lasted whatever love you guys bye